All right, I am genuinely curious how this is going to work out. I just installed Pop! OS on my laptop. Um, I don't use my laptop very often, and so when I do go to use it, and it had Windows 10 on it, every time I would go to use it, it you know, it would have an update to do. And a lot of those updates, the bigger ones, they go through that kind of like out-of-the-box experience again where they want you to log into a Microsoft account. I don't use a Microsoft account on my laptop. Again, I don't use it enough. It doesn't matter. I don't need a Microsoft account on my laptop. Sure, on my desktop, yeah, I've got one. I decided to use Pop! OS because, honestly, it can do everything I need the laptop to do. It can do basic web browsing. It can do 1080p YouTube uh, playback. Um, it can do uh, raw therapy if I need to do a little bit of photo editing on the go. Uh, GIMP, which is what we're here for. Uh, it's got VLC on there if I just need to play back some video files. Um, and, you know, less intrusive updates. And I don't have, you know, I don't have to worry about EOL support. You know, Windows 10 isn't going to be around much longer. And this laptop's too old to take Windows 11. Um, the installation was very quick, surprisingly quick, um, and out of the box, everything worked. Um, audio drivers, Wi-Fi drivers, Bluetooth drivers, um, you know, little things like your brightness buttons on the keyboard, all the little things I was kind of worried about, everything just worked out of the box, all right? So that's great. Um, this is a T440S, yes a fourth generation Core i5, um, but it's got an IPS 1080p screen in it that I installed. It didn't come with that. It came with like a, I don't know if it would have been <clears throat> what, 1366 by 768. Uh, it wasn't 1080p and it was like a TN panel. So it had really bad contrast in color and viewing angles. Um, it's actually got really good viewing angles now. It might be kind of hard to tell on video, but... Uh, yeah, 1080p IPS uh, screen in there. I actually really like this laptop, even though it's kind of a little bit older. But again, I don't use it very often. Anyways, what I noticed on here is how fast GIMP loads up <laughs> compared to on my desktop. Um, I don't, you know, pay for Photoshop. For basic photo editing, I've always just used GIMP. And GIMP is basically, it's made for Linux from the get-go. So the, you know, the Windows version, you know, obviously it's not going to be as efficient as a program that was made for Windows. Uh, I understand that. This isn't like a Linux versus Windows thing. A lot of people like to, you know, spout out that Linux runs faster than Windows. And that's not always true. Windows 10, Windows 11, it's pretty quick. It will load up very fast. It will load up certain programs very fast. No doubt about that. But. For what I use this for, GIMP is one of the main things I might use on here. I've got VLC on here. I've got raw therapy on here. Uh, it comes with Firefox out of the box. Um, but uh, yeah, I just found this kind of funny. So this is a fourth generation Core i5 mobile Core i5. It's two cores, four threads. And when we're running on battery, which we are right now, we're not plugged in. It's probably running at like 2 gigahertz, something like that. This has only got 8 gigabytes of RAM in there. DDR3, single channel. And the SSD is a SATA SSD. It's a Kingston 500 gigabyte. It's probably 500 to 550 megabytes per second. Uh, compare that to my desktop. My desktop is a Ryzen 7 5800X. as an 8-core, 16-thread up to like 4.6 gigahertz or something off the top of my head. I don't remember. Point is, it's the processor in this desktop is literally <laughs> like a thousand times faster and more powerful than the processor in this laptop, this old fourth gen mobile core i5. Uh, but it's 32 gigs of RAM, DDR4 RAM in dual channel. Again, this is eight gigs in single channel, DDR3. The SSD in my desktop. And that's really, when it comes down to loading speeds, right? The CPU and the SSD speed, probably the most important things. Uh, that's an M.2, right? It's like an NVMe, it's a Western Digital Black. 
is it's probably like 3,500 megabytes per second. 3,500 megabytes per second compared to the, the 500 or 550 megabytes per second of the SATA SSD in here. So CPU speed and SSD speed, there's just a huge difference, right? But what I found funny is how fast GIMP loads up on this laptop. I did a fresh restart, so nothing's like pre-cached in RAM. Uh, fresh restart right to the desktop here, and I did the same on the, sorry, on the laptop, and I did the same on the desktop. Um, so they're both like a fresh boot with nothing, nothing's going to be, it's not like GIMP was just loaded and then closed and then opened again, because that's not a fair comparison. That would be different. So we've got GIMP on here, all right? I've got GIMP on my desktop, so I'm gonna I'm gonna click it, and click the icon, so that I just have to press enter, and somehow I'm gonna have to press enter and <laughs> the trackpad at the same time. Shit, I'll give the desktop a slight benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna hit it first, and then boom, I'll hit it on here. Oh god, it it started way faster on the desktop, <laughs> but it still loaded up quicker on the laptop. <laughs> To be fair, it did load up pretty quick on the desktop. Again, GIMP on Windows isn't the most efficient thing loading up. But I started loading it a half a second or a second first on the desktop. And it still loaded up quicker on the laptop. So what if we close it? And we close it on here. And if we try it again, again, it's, you know, it might load faster in both cases just because it was just loaded and then closed. Um, let's try that again though. Get that a little bit closer. Still, that was not fair. It's I, it's hard to hit it on this trackpad. This trackpad doesn't have dedicated buttons. Um, but you know, I'll just do it like this. So, like, if we close GIMP and then open it again, yeah, it's pretty quick. But on here, it's also pretty quick. <laughs> when I was running Windows 10 on here, loading up GIMP would definitely take probably three or four times longer when it's doing all that like Python script stuff, loading the scripts. Um, yeah. No, GIMP just loads up very fast on here. And, uh, you know, same with like raw therapy. Raw Therapy is also open source. I'm not sure if it's like a Linux program first in the same way that GIMP is, but let's try it. We got Raw Therapy on my desktop and we've got Raw Therapy on my laptop here. And again, this is kind of hard to do. So, um, that was pretty close. Still, the desktop's going to... It's in on the laptop? Wait, what happened? Holy shit! It was loading so much faster on the laptop! Now, here, you know, it might have had to load up... You know, if we just go to, like, C Drive. Or something where it's not looking at pictures. Because that's more like here. It didn't have to, like, load up all the... Um, you know... Th thumbnails I guess but still let's close let's close GIMP on GIMP let's close raw therapy on both here let's try that again very unscientific I know it's not about the exactness of it so much okay what's going on? oh there it goes yep so again, raw therapy loads up faster. Actually, even more of a difference compared to GIMP. GIMP's pretty close. But they shouldn't be close. This is so much slower running off battery on a second gen i5 with 8 gigs of RAM, single channel, and a SATA SSD. Again, it should be so much faster on the Windows desktop. But yeah, raw therapy loads up faster on the laptop. That's crazy. So again, I'm going to assume Roth Therapy is a Linux program first. 
and it's basically just shoehorn to run on Windows. Are certain parts emulated? Does it have to like, I don't know, like preload scripts in the background on the Windows version or something while it's loading? That's crazy. That's all really all I got on here. I mean, VLC, it's not gonna take long to load VLC up. Um, and then for like the web browser, it's again, just comes with Firefox. Um, but yeah, the installation was super quick. Um, it immediately asked what um, online services I wanted to link uh, so I could log into my Google account. Um, so it's got, you know, my Google accounts kind of preloaded, even though we don't have Google Chrome. I can go to YouTube and I'm logged into my YouTube. Uh, that's great. Um, do I even need Chrome? I don't know. Firefox seems to be doing the job here. Um, 1080p playback is, um, find a video that will have uh, whatever, decent playback, I guess, to show. Full screen 1080p. There. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> Let's fast forward a little bit in the video here. And, 8, megahertz, CO30 and yeah, we're at well. 1080p 60. And it's too. perfect. It's good enough. <laughs> can play 1080p 60 full screen. Yeah, you got the pop store or the pop shop. And um, I literally just, you know, GIMP. Click install, raw therapy, click install, VLC, click install. It's one click installations and everything just worked. Um, so again, for what I do on this older laptop, it just makes sense just to have Linux on here. And um, you know, I kind of like having something I can sort of um, play with Linux on, um, you know, as an alternative. Look on my desktop, I like Windows. Even if these programs like GIMP and Raw Therapy, these kind of free, you know, open source programs that I use, uh, run f run a little bit slower, at least to load up. I'm sure once I'm in, you know, Raw Therapy and editing a larger image, it's probably going to be smoother and faster on the desktop. Uh, not to mention stuff like DaVinci Resolve and obviously any Windows programs that are actually written for Windows are obviously going to be way faster. And games, right? Because when game, gaming on Linux has come a long way and I, I kind of absolutely love that about the Steam Deck. Like you got all these portable uh, handheld computers, gaming computers now, you know, the Steam Deck, the ROG Ally. Um, Lenovo's got one. MSI just came out with one. I think it's called the Claw. And, you know, the Steam Deck came out first, and it's the cheapest. These other ones that have come out more recently, the Asus ROG and the, uh, the MSI Claw, they're more expensive. So they've, they've come out later, and they're more expensive. So, like, Obviously, they're more powerful. The processor, or the, especially on the GPU side, in those other uh, handhelds, is definitely a lot more powerful than the Steam Deck. But the Steam Deck's cheaper and it's been out longer. But the thing I really like about the Steam Deck is that Steam OS and that experience of launching games, um, quickly bringing up the uh, you know your scaling and your 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 uh, frame you know frame limiter and your your power state uh, power limiter um, that is just so seamless and it works so well and there's so many games that run on it and in a lot of cases older Windows games that don't run on Windows 10 or 11 like you can go back to some of the older games and obviously like some of the um, community kind of tweaks do. Uh, kind of come into play but they're like kind of like automatic almost like correct me if I'm wrong but on the Steam Deck if the community decides like you know in this game the way that the controls should work and the way that the little touch sensor pad areas should work in this game when enough of the community decides that that's how the controls are the best that kind of gets like automatically implemented for everyone else it might wrong there i think that's a thing i don't know just the whole experience and again switching your uh 
your scaling or your frame limit or your your power states and just doing all that on the on the touch screen even compared to running you know the touch screen on those other devices running windows it's like so sketchy sometimes i don't know i really love holy shit that was like a whole way off topic there as i was just trying to say that i like that <laughs> gaming on linux is kind of gaining some traction but, you know, for my main desktop, I still just prefer Windows, to be honest. Um, but on here, wow, it's really opened my eyes how fast these programs are loading up. As fast, if not faster, than they are on my desktop. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, it just, it makes so much sense on this laptop and for what I use this laptop on. And again, it's just kind of nice to have, you know, Linux to play around on. It, maybe it'll give me more of a reason to use my laptop more often. I don't know. Maybe. I do love this old laptop. Like, I just love the old ThinkPad, right? You know, the T-Series ThinkPad. Does it say anywhere on here? Manufacturing date? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the latest copyright is 2013. That might not be far off. It might might be like 2000, 2013, 2014. It's fourth gen Intel, right? We're on 14th gen Intel, which would put it at roughly 10 years. This is roughly a generation per year. So actually, yeah, it would be roughly 2013, 2014. But, like perfectly usable i got way off tangent on a lot of stuff here um <laughs> but yeah i love this old laptop and uh, absolutely loving linux on it that was pop os i give it a try right not enough people out there just trying linux and i get it because i'm guilty on my main desktop again i just run windows and if i need to run adobe products boom i can if i need to run all the games with no worries, boom, I can't, I get it, right? But uh, yeah, if you got like a secondary machine or like a laptop lying around, yeah, give Pop OS a try. Uh, I guess that's it. Again, very unscientific, but again, it wasn't about exact numbers. The fact this thing can come close to loading up GIMP, uh, or I should say, yeah, GIMP was pretty close, right? Like, GIMP was basically tied. But raw therapy, this was loading up even faster. Quite a bit faster, which is hilarious. Again, it's not necessarily a Windows versus Linux thing there. Those are programs that were really made for Linux first. And then just sort of like shoehorned onto Windows. If you, if you want it, it's an option. But yeah. Those programs definitely run a lot faster on Linux, don't they?